Hi, I'm Bill Shaw, and this is an instructional video on the new Colt Master. We now will just go through uh, the different parts of the machine. Uh, this is our work vise. Uh, this is where you put your work pieces. Um, again, it goes up to about 11 and a quarter inches wide. Uh, we're going to put an outfeed roller to hold the piece up. Uh, then we're going to put our template down in this vise. Uh, the template normally is just short enough, just has to be flush with the back here and it's going to stick out a little bit in the front in the work area up here. We have a light switch and a motor switch up here. This is our viewing window to uh, view the coping action. Uh, we have our control knobs here. Uh, I'm standing behind the machine right now for clarity. You would be in front of the machine and these are the knobs that you will hold to move the carriage so you can uh, make the stylus follow the template and the blade will do the work on the workpiece. We have a transportation lock right here in the back. Uh, this locks the machine uh, for when you're transporting it and you pick it up and turn it and that takes it out of the way for uh, working. We have a magnet at the back of the machine that's so when you're done with your cut, you don't have to shut the machine off in production cuts. You throw the machine to the back, the magnet will hold it out of the way while you're putting in your next workpiece. Then you pull it off the magnet and you start your next cut. So on this side we have the stylus. Uh, you can call this like the shark fin. What it is, is it has the same radius as the saw blade. This is a 10 inch saw blade with a 5 inch radius. This is a 5 inch radius so it's mimicking the saw blade. The stylus has a knob in the back. If we loosen this knob, we can tilt the stylus. The stylus always wants to be at the same angle as the saw blade. It wants to be parallel to the saw blade. The saw blade's straight up and down. The stylus wants to be straight up and down. Then we have a knob in the back. When we release this, we can move the stylus side to side. By screwing this knob out, the springs are pushing this and it slides out on a dovetail way uh, so we can adjust the distance from the saw blade to the stylus. The distance from this fixed vice jaw for the workpiece to this fixed vice jaw for the template is seven and a half inches. And we need the distance from the stylus to the saw blade to be seven and a half inches as well. Um, and depending on whether the blade's tilted or not in manufacturing discrepancies, we put an adjustment on it so you can fine tune that detail. And we'll show you that later on as we get into the operation of the machine. We also have two carriage locks on the machine. If I pull the transportation lock up and the machine now can move freely, this carriage lock will lock the machine from moving front to back and now the machine can only move side to side. We have another carriage lock located in the front and that locks the machine side to side and now the machine will only go front to back. And then if we lock both of the carriage locks at the same time, the blade is stationary and there's different applications for using both of those knobs. So in general use, the knobs are both loose so the machine can throw, uh, flow freely and only in special applications are we going to lock one or two of those knobs. There's also a knob at the back of the machine that allows us to tilt the saw blade. So I lock the rotation lock again. If I hold the motor because of the weight of the motor will make this fall up or down. We can see that if I loosen this knob I can tilt the saw blade and this is for when we're doing crown molding we're going to tilt the blade and we have a protractor on the back with the indicator here so once we get it to the proper angle we're going to lock it then we're going to record the angle that we have we'll write it on our template so we can have that for future use if you come back to that template you can just put it right back to 44 degrees or whatever it was and you're good to go or if you're going to do baseboard, you would bring it back and set it to zero degrees and you're ready to do baseboard or anything that sits flat on the wall. 
Okay, want to talk about the saw blade and the relation with the saw blade to the stylus. Uh, the blade is a special blade made for the Colt Master. Uh, we designed it with six teeth that are actually seven eighths of an inch long. It lets you hog out material up to about seven eighths of an inch deep going sideways. So you can really hog the material out very quickly. The teeth on the six long teeth are actually five facets. So the other teeth are triple chip. So there's three facets, 45 degree of flat and another 45 degree. With the five facets, we're gonna come up, angle a little bit more, flat across the top down, so it simulates a radius, okay? Um, and for that reason, here's a molding going into a square corner, and this is the sawtooth coming into the corner, and you can see it's not gonna clear out the corner. So if you have a lot of corners, like on a chair rail, there might be three, or three square corners in a chair rail, you might wanna take a file and just stroke each corner uh, you can test fit them and, and see how well it fits, but sometimes on a stain grade you might want to file those corners before you even take it out of the vise draw. Um, but typically you don't need to. Uh, if there's a V cut, it won't get into the bottom of the V, okay? So you just need to know that it is radius. And the reason why it's radius is because we had a radius the stylus. Because the stylus is going over the template, it's sliding along the template. If the stylus had square edges on it, the square edge would be trying to slide up your template and it's gonna catch and dig in. So the stylus is radius and we radius the saw blade because they need to match each other. Uh, the other thing with the saw blade is these six teeth are actually higher than the short teeth. So the six teeth are the ones that are actually doing the finished cut and the other teeth are just helping remove material. So when you sharpen this blade, and it's carbide, so you can send it out to your local shop and have them sharpen it, tell them to face grind the teeth. So they're just going to grind the face of the tooth until the edges and the tips are sharp. Typically, they're face ground and they're, the side relief is ground and the top of the teeth. But uh, this is done on a computer-controlled machine, and most of your shops aren't going to have the program to do that. So just tell them to face grind the tooth. The kerf on this is 125 thousandths so an eighth of an inch kerf. Um, because all blades have a little bit of run out, the actual saw kerf might be 126, 128, 130, depending on how much run out there is in the blade and the arbor and the, uh, the stiffening washers and all of that. The stylus uh, is 120 thousandths or thereabouts thick. Uh, the metal we start with is 115 thousandths and then we powder coated it and it brings it up to about 120 or so. So the stylus is smaller than the saw blade uh, and with the run out. The reason why we needed to make it smaller is because when you sharpen a saw blade, every time you take a face cut and that tooth is relieved on the back, the face is actually gonna get narrower as you go back down the tooth and as you sharpen it. So the blade is actually gonna get it narrower. So after a couple of regrinds, you might be down at 120 or so, and even with the run out. So that's why the stylus is smaller than the saw blade to start with. Uh, that being said, if you uh, are going into a bead, let's say on this baseboard, and you're going into the bead, and the bead is a quarter inch across, well, as the stylus traces it, the stylus is going to go a quarter of an inch over that bead. The saw blade, because it's cutting a little bit bigger, it's going to cut the bead on your workplace a little bit bigger. So the bead on the workpiece might be eight thousandths or ten thousandths bigger. Nine out of ten times, or ninety-nine out of a hundred, that's not going to make any difference to you as a finished carpenter. The bead, the copes are going to fit perfect. Uh, if it's paint grade, the paint's going to cover a five thousandth gap. Um, not a problem. If you're really finicky and you want it to be dead tight, you could put a piece of tape over the stylus. Just wrap it right around the stylus and that's going to make the stylus thicker and you're going to reproduce the bead cut or the detail a little bit more accurately but like I said that's hardly ever needed. I've had two or three guys ask me that question out of the 1100 machines on the old Colt Master we sold. And basically there's only three adjustments for the machine. The uh, saw blade angle, the stylus angle, and then the stylus side to side adjustment, and that's it. We need to know more than that, but there's really only three basic adjustments, and we'll get into the finer details 
uh, in the next chapter.